You've been a pilot on planes here on Earth, right? Correct. Correct. And then were you also piloting into space? Uh, I was the commander of the Dragon, uh, recently flown on Dragon this past year. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, what was it like the last trip? Uh, absolutely incredible. I've been a, been a few times, been blessed to, to be up there a few times. This time was on a new spacecraft. That was the real thrill this time was to fly on Crew Dragon and uh, be the second uh, operational crew to do that. Uh, it, was, it was an incredible ride uphill and uh, brought us home safely and it was a pretty fun ride on the way back as well. The time on Space Station, uh, we were there about 200 days and so it was a long time. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and uh, you know, it was very similar to my previous flight where we're doing a bunch of science and research yeah. on board. How was that spaceship, the Dragon, different than other spaceships you've been a part of? Well, I mean, it is totally futuristic, right? I mean, it is, it's touch screens everywhere, right? You're sitting in these really nice lush chairs and <laughs> it's definitely a futuristic spacecraft. I mean, the previous ones I flew on were Space Shuttle, you know, designed in the 70s and 80s and then Soyuz designed even before that, right? So technology-wise, it was just night and day uh, and the ride was, was fantastic, like I mentioned before. And that's part NASA and then also part privatized? Yeah, so it's, a, it's the kind of a, it's a nice partnership we have with these private companies. Um, Boeing is also building us a spacecraft, um, hopefully launching later this year to get our astronauts going on their system. But SpaceX, um, they figured it out a few years ago and we've been flying on it uh, for the last couple of years. It's been great. So you're one of the few astronauts that's actually traveled in different types of ships. I mean, three. True. Um, You've already talked a little bit about that in terms of like the difference in comfort and things like that. Tell me a little bit more about what makes you unique in terms of space travel. You've, you've been up there a lot. How many days? Uh, I think the total is 388 total days now on yeah. three different missions. So, so over a year in space. Yeah, over a year in space. Yeah. So. Do you miss it already? Um, not quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I've only been back a few months. It takes, it takes our brains a bit to yeah. um, recover from something like that long duration mission. Um, so your question about me being unique, I mean, I'm, I've just been very lucky to, to be able to fly on three different vehicles. There's only, I think, a handful of people that have ever done that. Yeah. Um, there's only a couple of them that are living right now, so that makes me a bit unique. Uh, maybe the only American right now mm. um, to launch and land. Tom Marshman will be coming home in a few months, and he'll, he'll join me in that category. Yeah. But uh, currently, he's only launched in three, but hasn't landed in three. So, yeah, just, just lucky to be and have these opportunities yeah. to, to go serve our country. So it seems like any space travel that's happening now is not just NASA. You know, the, they're collaborating with other ventures, privatized yeah. companies mm -hmm. like SpaceX. Can you elaborate a little bit more on those partnerships? Yeah, the value so, in those collaborations. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of you know, detailed partnerships with SpaceX, of course, but there's many, several other companies out there that are doing the same thing, from Blue Origin to um, Axiom and uh, Boeing and other yeah. kinds. So it's, it's really a, a booming business right now, so to speak, which is great. I mean. For us, I think the more people involved in space in the industry right. is better for NASA, it's better for all of us. Um, and so it's, it's helping NASA, I think, think out of the box a little more, right? We, we're typical government, yeah. slow moving machine, right? <laughs> but these private companies, I think, really have helped us think differently and maybe yeah. move a little quicker. Um, doesn't mean we sacrifice safety or anything like that, but sure. it's, uh, it's just really helped us think a little bit differently. And uh, it's, it's been fascinating for me personally working with SpaceX and to see how fast they move. Um, and that's, that can be a negative connotation, but to me it's a, it's a positive connotation. And they're of course meeting all the safety guidelines and that's where NASA comes in to make sure before we put a human on there, you know, a NASA human, then we're gonna make sure they meet right. all the safety requirements and they have done that um, beautifully and integrated that really great. So uh, yeah, I think it's great, you know, I mean, what, back in the 50s maybe when airplanes were just starting to come around and people, only the rich could fly on them, right? Yeah. Well, that's kind of the way it is with this private space industry right now. It's just the, the wealthy get right. a chance to get a few minutes up in space. But, you know, a few decades from now, maybe that'll change where the, the yeah. common person will have the chance, like the airline industry now, pretty much yeah. most people can fly on. Maybe everybody will get a chance to go get their three to five minutes in space. Wow. Um, that'd be pretty cool. What's it yeah. like working with an international team? Yeah, the international piece of it for me has been fascinating. Um, yeah. It's so many different cultures, of course, and to me that was really interesting. To, and our crewmates, like on this last mission, we had Russian crewmates, Japanese crewmates, French crewmates, huh. and U.S. And just, I mean, we enjoyed all of them, right? They were amazing people, and getting to know them and their cultures and their traditions 
you know, we're, we're off the planet for about half a year, so there are a lot of holidays and things like that that we experience up there. And sometimes they're not the same as the way we do things in the U.S., right? So, you know, their Christmas traditions or whatever were really, really fascinating yeah. for me to learn. And in our training, um, when I flew on Soyuz, spent a lot of time in Russia training. So about every other month for two years was spent in Russia. And so just getting immersed into yeah. that culture was really fascinating for me. Um, we're training, the training center over there is on a former Soviet military base, right? And for me being a military person, yeah. it's like, this, like what, it, this is the strangest thing. Um, but it's just fascinating how, how far we've come as countries, right? And, yeah. and there's political tensions sometimes still. But uh, in the space business, you know, the, the Russians and us are really, really tight. And we've had great relationships uh, over the past couple of decades as we've worked to really be the major partners in the International Space Station. And really, that's got to be the key to making all this happen quickly, you know, it's collaboration, Absolutely. right? You know, you learn from them, they learn from you. Yeah. And, and we, we need all these partnerships going forward, right? We, yeah. we can't do it as a country alone and nor can anybody else. Yeah. And so the partnerships are really critical. And uh, I, think, I think the space industry is really a great model for society, right? When you, when you get all these different countries that sometimes on earth don't play so well together, but we we're, have a common mission and a common goal in space. And it's yeah. incredible the things we're accomplishing together and again, benefiting humanity, yeah. as well as uh, getting ready for future exploration. That's gotta be the greatest way to uh, create unity, is either having that common mission Absolutely. or a common enemy. Well, <laughs> Hopefully it's not that, but a common yeah, mission. Common you know? mission, for sure. Um, that does unify our teams, and it's just not the astronauts, it's all the teams in the mission control centers around the world. Honestly, they're doing the really hard stuff, and we yeah. so appreciate them. And so I don't want them to be lost in any of this yeah. because they're the ones that get us out of some tough situations and, yeah. and get us back home, just like Apollo 13 should. Probably similar to being in the military. Everybody's got everybody's back, you know? Right. Yeah. Yep. There, there's a lot of similarities there, for yeah. sure. So mm -hmm. going to Mars, three to five minutes in space, what else do you foresee <laughs> for the future? Well, um, that's quite a bit. I mean, the Mars, yeah. the Mars thing is a big goal of NASA right now, and that's, I mean, that's, kind of the horizon goal, right? So that's, it's not happening tomorrow. Uh, we don't have the technology to yeah. get there. And so it's literally gonna take the next few decades for us to figure that out. Uh, we're, we're committed to doing it and putting you know, NASA astronauts on Mars. Now, will somebody else beat us there before that? Maybe, but um, NASA's committed to, to building this infrastructure. Of course, we talked about you know, around and on the moon first and uh, learn all we can from that before. And that's the moon's about a quarter million miles away, which is a long ways. Right, space station is only about 200 miles away, so that's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. And then Mars, we're talking 25 million miles at the at the closest. So we're really about average about 30 million miles away. So that's a huge leap. It takes about six to nine months to get a get something from Earth to Mars right now. And uh, you can't just put an astronaut in a can for that long and right. expect them to survive. And the yeah. radiation environment is really challenging as well that we have to work on and figure that out so we can keep our astronauts healthy. And it's not just to get there; it's to get them home. Right, that's, the, that's probably, that is the bigger piece. And we're not just gonna send somebody on a one-way mission. Right. And so we are committed to getting them there, living, learning, and then landing back here on Earth yeah. uh, once we get there, so. Why, why do you think it's so important that we continue to explore in space? Obviously, it's very expensive. Yep. There's a lot of other things we could be doing in theory to help planet Earth as sure. it is now. Mm -hmm. So why continue this? these experiments, yeah. the space exploration? Yeah, great question. I mean, a lot of it is we don't know. We don't know what we don't know, right? So we're gonna, there's gonna be so many scientific discoveries, um, technology demonstrations that end up being things that help people here on Earth that come out of, you know, this moon program and then eventually the Mars program. Yeah. And so just like it did in the Apollo days, just like we've continued to do at NASA throughout the space shuttle program and now in the Soyuz and now commercial vehicles that we're flying on. And so I don't think that's gonna change. Like we didn't know, you know, all the stuff we were going to find out until you yeah. start digging in and, and start exploring, just like any explorer, right? You're going to go on an expedition, and that's exactly, you know, what these are. And you go on some crazy expedition, and you're going to find out stuff. You know, you, you don't even know the questions to ask until you right. kind of get out there. And so I'm looking forward to seeing really the, the discoveries that we're going to have by going to Mars here in the next couple of decades. Um, and, you know, there's certainly minerals out there that we hope to mine and things like that. But I think yeah. there's even more... I think there's more that we just don't know yet yeah. until we get out there. It's, you know, it's, everybody's vision, I think, is the Martian, right? The movie. And then, yeah. you know, maybe it'll be like that a little bit. But uh, my guess is it's going to be a lot different and we're going to have different challenges for sure. Um, and, you know, the discoveries are going to be unbelievable. So. 
This video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. Connect with me, Gabe McCauley, and Reconnecting Roots by visiting reconnectingroots.com, where you'll discover music, blogs, behind the scenes, our podcast, and more. Join our email list and never miss a beat.